Good evening, everybody, and welcome to uh, a special edition of, of Auto Know Better with some unfamiliar faces. I knew, know you're used to seeing uh, probably some some rather uglier faces on, on OKB, but we've got some uh, some delights on tonight from, from around the country uh, and more so with, in, with regard to our... Our rivals, shall we say, our, our rivals to to promotion. So we are very kindly. Gilly and I are joined by uh, by Tom from um, from Leicester Fan TV. How are we doing, Tom? All right. Yeah, good. Thanks. Start yourselves. Spot on, mate. Thank you for asking. Good, Spot thank on. you. Uh, Matt is here from Talking Town. How are we doing, Matt? Oh yeah, you're right. What what odds would you have given an Ipswich fan being on your running show back in the summer? <laughs> hey, I would have given. Uh, do you know what? I, I've got. A, I've just, we were talking before, weren't we? I, I've got a lot of friends who are Ipswich because I live. I live in Suffolk these days. Yeah, yeah. Um, and and before the start of the season, they were giving it the big and saying, "I'm. I think we're going to do all right. I think we'll finish mid table or or creep into the playoffs." And I was giving. I was like, "It's a different kettle of fish, mate. You, <laughs> you're not going to do that. Like you're going to be struggling yeah. all season. And then look, I'll eat my humble pie. And and there, that you look, you're here on merit and and deservedly so. So yeah, yeah. I would. I would have given you massive, yeah. massive odds. Yeah, <laughs> good to be here. Uh, thanks for coming on. And then finally, Martin, how are we doing, Martin? All right, here representing, repping the Saints. Uh, I think the Saints yeah. were the ones who were probably just about at the pitch at the minute. Is, it, is that sound fair? Yeah, I would say so for, for their two automatics <laughs> places. Yeah, I, I, I wouldn't say um, that we're, we're in that running at the moment. I was that it was it was a bit of a joke. So I don't know if you saw the uh, the Saints, uh, the Saints view, I think yeah. they're called actually. Uh, their I know, tweet, it's quite uh, incredible, really. <laughs> he just kind of made a bit of a laughing stock of our whole fan base, really, when he did it. He kind of he he, he had leads. He, he didn't he put he put them in the equation. This is about I think it was about October November time, wasn't it? Um, quite incredible. Makes our fan base like a laughing stock. But I think any anybody that knows football like we, like we we all do, uh, Leeds have got a very good manager in Daniel Farker. Very very good squad of players. Um, you would have been an absolute fool to have left them out of that promotion automatic race. Um, I think you're possibly looking at the um, a team that are going to win the league in Leeds. Um, and I've had a sneaky feeling about them for a while. Well, I, that's music to our ears because uh, I'm sure Gilly and I will will lap that up. But we'll I, we we'll will get that. into yeah we'll take we'll, we'll start your hand off for that uh, right now. But we'll get into a bit of a chat. Loads loads to go out tonight, lads. Thanks ever so much for joining us. We'll run a quick intro and we will uh, yeah we'll get into a bit. Cheers. Hi, this is Don Matteo, and then you are listening to the Auto Know Better podcast. Let's do this. <laughs> you like look like a fucking you're a leader in bastard. Oh, like some sort of fucking weird floating head. No. <laughs> the utensil player a bit, innit? I mean, I feel a bit right, dickhead. Nothing spectacular, really. <laughs> so those of you, so those of you who are, who are new here, you probably didn't get, didn't really know what you were letting yourselves in for us. So should I, should I, should I, should I let you know? It's 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 quite a light-hearted pod, you know. There's, you know, drop the f bomb. We're not here to make loads of money or get famous. It is just football chat and it's football banter. So there, there, there's there's no holds barred, uh, and you're more than welcome to call each other names. And, and, and I mean, within within reason. Come on, let's let's be a little bit friendly. We're, I know we're rivals, but let's uh, let's try keep keep it a little bit fair. Um. So then, I think I want to. I think let's address the elephant in the room to start with, Tom. Um, Leicester, Leicester, um, seventeen points. I think at one stage it was uh, clear of clear of us, certainly in third place at the time, I believe. Uh, and I think you were also sort of eight points clear of. of I believe it was Ipswich at the time uh, who were who were nine in front of us. So where's where's it gone wrong for you guys so far? And and and, and do you expect to take that form into into the rest of the season? You might say it go wrong, but then also you could say, is it a blip that had to come at some point? You know, I, I said all season that there was a point and we would have a blip and things would drop off. Injuries can hit you. I think we've seen that the loss of Ricardo and Ndidi the last five, six games, especially Ndidi before Christmas. It really hampered the way we play because we haven't really got another natural number eight. We've got players on loan, but they don't fill that position like Wilf and Diddy has this season. And who would have thought this time last year we would have been talking about Wilf and Diddy, the de defensive midfielder, going in and playing eight and playing it superbly. I, th I said halfway through the season, even when we're winning game after game, there'd come a point when something would go wrong and it, it would be how we recover. And I think the Leeds game probably hit us worse than we think. You know, I think we were 1-0 up, we were cruising. 
a goal disallowed wrongly, but you know, you still have to carry on. And then we get the chance in front of goal and Daka from six yards out put, puts it wide. You boys then you get that little bit of lift because we haven't gone two nil up and you, you you smash us, you know, and I think that hit the squad more than ever. You know, then after that game we lost Ricardo, he's not played since. And for all the stars in our team, Ricardo's probably been the star man this season. Winks has been brilliant, but his partner in crime has been Ricardo. And when we've not had Ricardo playing in that uh, inverted fullback role and going forward, we don't look the same team. The news that he's been available and back in the team for tomorrow and, you know, for the remain, hopefully the remainder season injury free could be the difference. The same with the likes of a Diddy coming back. It's not been great. It was, it was looking very pretty at once, but I think you have to give credit to Leeds and Ipswich for keeping up and keep going. When we start making the blip, you boys just carried on rolling and uh, got, got to the top of the hill and then we took our foot off the gas, maybe. Uh, we, we had a, a couple of poor results, but you boys just kept churning the results out every single week. And it was, you know, I put my hands up and say, Leeds and Ipswich, fair play to you boys. You, you, you pulled that back. Yeah, we chucked it away, you could say, but I think you have to say you boys are the ones who kept the pressure on us. Let's let's. I mean, I mean, fair, fair news. I mean, I mean well, you, you mentioned mentioned Ipswich there. He mentions Ipswich there, Matt. What? I mean, you. I mean, you had a fair old run on us at one stage as well. So I mean, we. You know, we, we, I mean, we've beaten everybody but Saints in here twice this season. So you know, we we're, we're in good company between Gilly and I uh, until we play until the last day of the season when when we meet with Martin and, and his boys. Oh but, God. Um, <laughs> but but but. But Ipswich were actually at one stage much further ahead than us than than nine points. Both both Ipswich and Leicester beat some crazy records at going off at a, you know a real a real rate. Did you ever did you ever think then, Matt? Did, first of all, did you ever think that you, you you'd be in that position? But but did you ever think you were sustainable? Did you ever think that you know we, we are bound to drop at some stage? Because I've thought that all season and it just hasn't really happened. It's happened in bits, but it hasn't ever really come come to fruition, has it? No, I mean, look, I don't think any of us, look, we said at the start, didn't we? I don't think any of us fan really thought that we would be contesting top two positions to get into the Premier League, having come out of League One last season. But we got off to a really fantastic start. So we had all the momentum last season. Of course, of course we just we were just shy of winning the title. Fair play to Plymouth. And we're, we're kind of the, we're playing the Plymouth role to you this season. We always, Plymouth was a fall in the side to us last season. We thought we'd get 100 points, 100 goals and win the title. We got the 100 goals. We didn't get the 100 points and they beat pipped us to it. They never went anywhere. And we've been kind of like that this, this season. I don't think we've been below fourth, maybe. I'm not sure. I can't remember. Um, so it's been a fantastic run. The momentum of last season, McKenna can do no wrong with the Ipswich fan base. He's been well backed by our owners in the United States. Um, but where it did go a little bit wrong for us was actually Tom against Leicester when George Hurst got the, you know, where we signed you from. Um, he got the hamstring at Portman Road, did his hamstring. And then we were basically about a goal threat for, you know, that back end of December into January until we managed to get Keith Moore in on loan from Bournemouth. And we really struggled without a recognised number nine. You know, don't get me started on losing to Maidstone in the FA Cup, but we had to play up and play. I think it was either Caden Jackson or Nathan Ball that played in the nine in that game. We just didn't have any goal for it. And we have scored a lot of goals out of midfield and the three that sit behind the number the number nine. But for whatever reason, that run of game, Stoke, we drew nil-nil. Listen, we've scored, I think we've scored the most goals in the four divisions, outscoring Manchester City over the last couple of years. But, you know, we just couldn't find our shooting boots. But, you know, we, we've rediscovered them again going into the new year. And, you know, we've won seven out of eight. We've only had one blip at Cardiff where we was winning one nil into the 90th minute and then did a Bayern Munich against United in the Champions League and chucked two goals <laughs> in the 94th minute and the 95th, whatever it was. I Leeds thought... didn't play them then, mate. It was it was that other that other scum from across the uh, the Pennines. <laughs> there's only, there's only yeah, one yeah, there's yeah. only one United when, when you're sorry, in this, when you're sorry, in this yeah, yeah, I've got to remember, I've got to remember whose house I'm in, right? Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. Manchester United. Um, but look, we couldn't ask for anything more. To be in the mix here, to be on the show this evening, talking about if she's being in a promotion race to the Premier League is. Stuff of dreams because it wasn't that long ago. It was only three years ago we got taken over by the the guys in Arizona, the um the the, the retirement fund there for Blue Light Services that, that is uh, in charge of Ipswich. Look, we've had some new money coming over the last week, but they, they're still the majority shareholders. But under Marcus Evans, we was going nowhere. Probably going to League Two, like Portsmouth did. Look, you've seen Oldham 
not too far from you boys, or drop drop out into the non-league. So, you know, never say never, but they came in, saved us, and now look, we're knocking on the door of the Premier League and we couldn't ask for anything more, really. We're happy to be here. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, just on just on that, I mean, do you know, do you, I, I've made similarities, I mean, and not necessarily to, to, to playing styles and, 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 and capabilities and stuff, but what you guys have done uh, this season under um, under McKenna, He's, he's very similar to, you know, he's getting the best out of, uh, you know, a probably arguably a team that isn't probably rightfully where they are in the league based on, you know, based on actual attributes and, and skill level. But actually, he's getting the best out of those players. He's getting a real tune out of those players and and and, and often getting a good bunch of players and uh, that, that that have, uh, you know, the same beliefs and, and everything together that actually believe that they're better than what they are and, and getting that extra 10% out of them is, is probably... I would argue that probably more down to McKenna than actually the playing the stuff. Absolutely. And he inherited the core of our squad as well. If you look at someone like, um, you know, Sam Morsey, that was a, that was a Paul Cook signing. Ditto Connor Chaplin. Um, you know, we, we, we managed to attract some good players. Christian Walton, who's sitting on our bench at the moment, he got injured, got goalkeeper, got injured in pre-season and Haladki come in. He was traditionally our reserve keeper. He's kept his place all season. So Cook did very well in sort of managing to, to persuade players to come down from the championship to league one with a little bit of dough thrown in as well. Let's not forget the American dollar to come in and play for us. But yeah, we've just, we've just seen that. We've just seen that replicated in the, in the championship. And he's brought in like Massimo Luongo who did well at Sheffield Wednesday. Didn't get a new contract there because he kept getting injured. Couldn't get in the team at Middlesbrough. Been absolutely unbelievable for us in the cent in the center of the park with, with Morsey. There are, there are two in the middle. So, um, yeah, we're all, as much as you're surprised, we're all surprised as well. But, you know, we're, 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 you know, we're a thorn in your side, but we're delighted to see it. You know what I mean? Well, not in our side. Not in our side particularly. Well, because we, that, we, we a long way to go yet, Luke. <laughs> <laughs> um, Just a so question start, on that then. It's, so, um, sorry, Luke, just, just a quick one on that one. So um, in terms of the shape of the season and the way that it's gone so far, but looking to next season, if you were to go up automatically... It's, it's that that question of would it be too soon for Ipswich? Would they be able to go again and make that that step? Um, I really, really want to see that Derby record stand. Um, so anybody getting promoted, I, I don't want them <laughs> being that record. <laughs> Le, I, You've yeah, already got it, the most goals conceded in the Premier League record, haven't you? That's right. That, yeah, 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 all right. Was right, it right. Nine, that was <laughs> as well, wasn't it? All right, lads, we've all had a drink. Settle down. <laughs> um, Fair play. Look, listen, look, look, Luton have done all right, haven't they, going up? I thought they would, I, I thought they would be in, uh, they'd, they'd be troubling that Derby record, but they've been holding their own. Look, we, we, when we previously went up in 2000, 2001, everyone said we'd go straight back down. We ended up finishing fifth, looking in on door the Champions League, for crying out loud, in the last few weeks of the season. So you, you just, you just never know, like you said earlier. The look, George Bully had a really great team spirit that, with, with that side. Certainly in that first season, he kept the, the core of that team that got us promoted. And again, you saw the momentum of a good manager buying into a style of play, as you alluded to earlier. You know, McKenna's, McKenna's barely, lost a, you know, he's barely lost a handful of games for us. I mean, just unbelievable. I mean, look, I think we lost four last season. We're on five this, this season. That's nine across two seasons. Um, look, fantastic. Who knows what the future might hold? But... Yes, it's, it is, as you said earlier, it's a different kettle of fish getting to the Premier League. And look at Vincent Company. We all, we played yeah. them in the cup and we're like, bloody hell, Burnley are going to have a good season when they get promoted to the to the Premier League. And everyone was talking about Company being the, the you know successor to um, Pep Guardiola. I'd argue you wouldn't get a job sweeping out their dressing room now, such as the <laughs> stock that is, that's fallen. But, you know, th th that is football for you, isn't it? Yeah, that's it, mate. That's it. Um Look, when we started, Martin, uh, sorry to, I know you're not chiming in there because you've, uh, I, well, I don't know how you feel about it, but um, obviously we said earlier on at the start that, I mean, first of all, do we all think that our clubs will get promoted? Yes. As a, as a Southampton fan, Leicester I'm, should, not, shouldn't they? I'm not convinced. Leicester should. I'm not convinced. Leicester should. Definitely. You're not convinced, Ooh. Martin? I think we've got a long way to go. I think we've got a really tough run. Um, We've wobbled a bit, haven't we, recently? Um, we, we started to let goals in. We, we went on a 25-game unbeaten run, which was quite incredible. It was a club record. Russell Martin did an incredible job in that period of time. Very settled side. It was 23 league games. It was it was remarkable, really. Um, we didn't see a defeat down at St Mary's between the Ipswich game. Um, and when we, we, we lost uh, against, uh, you know, whole 
a few weeks ago. So it's been an incredible run and it, and it put us in a really good position. But I think the the defeats for us against Bristol City away at Ashton Gate and then to go back to St Mary's and lose to Hull, but then to lose to Millwall wasn't great really. And the, the manner of the defeats and it looked like a side that lost a lot of confidence, which is really alarming actually, seeing that we've been on a run that was 25 games unbeaten. You think, I think it all started against Huddersfield at home. We just looked really uncomfortable. We just didn't look comfortable. Let three goals in, and yeah, I just think we're going to need to really show a, a different bit, a different mentality coming into this final ten. We got ten games. We got we we got the two games in hand, big two games in hand, and and I think we have to walk out of this weekend with six points to really stand a really good chance. I think we have to beat Ipswich on Monday. I think it's the biggest game of the season for us. And I think if we don't, I think Ipswich, uh, it puts them in a really strong position for second. Uh, it, it'd be between them and Leicester. They'll fight it out. Uh, well, I still think Leeds will win it personally. But um, I think, we, yeah, we're going to have to go some. I think, we'll be, I think we're a playoff side, I've got to be honest. Interesting, really interesting. But, but obviously, Tom, Matt, you think you think the position you're in now, you think, do you think automatically you'll both go up or do you think you'll both go up? In another through another fashion, we'll, we'll come on to playoffs a bit later. So I mean, don't go into too much about who you might play over the playoffs. But you both comfortably think that you that you will get promoted this season. Tom, I tend to ask you first. Yeah, yeah. I, no, I think we'll go up. I think we'll go up automatically. I know someone just put in there about EDF points deductions and all that crap. I'm sorry, it is crap because it's penalising the football club uh, and the fans who have spent hard earned money to get us to where we are this season. And we're quick enough to jump on Forest, Everton, uh, and Leicester to get points deduction. But Manchester City, Chelsea can go and splash the cast. 500 million Chelsea have spent in what, two and a half years? Not a single point deduction. Borderline, apparently, on FSP. Manchester City have got charges. 140 charges, is it? Not a single point deduction yet. Leicester break the rules, we jump on them. Forest break the rules, we jump on them. The little clubs are getting penalised, but the big clubs get away with it. I think it'd be disrespectful now for this group of players to be penalised at this point in the season. Fine, put, put us back to the Premier League where we break the rules and then, you know, make us have the six points or whatever you want to charge us, but it happened in the Premier League, not in the Football League. So for me, we shouldn't be points deducted this point of the season now. It's too late to start chucking around and doing that to a club that have done nothing, you know, in the Football League that then try and get out of it. Yeah, where does where does where does that end though? Because I know the F, I know the Football League is different to the is separate from the Premier League, but we got our points deduction actually when we went down to into 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 the Championship and then in League One as well. Um, so so I was split over two leagues, and I know I know I know it's the Football League, and they have slightly different rules to the Premier League. But I mean, you, so you're not arguing that you deserve it of a, of, a, of no. some sort of sanction. If we broke the rules, we broke the rules. But for me, that's happened in the Premiership. And those, that's a completely different competition. The Premier League broke away from the Football League in 1991, was it 92? When just after Leeds had won the title that season. So why should they now suddenly think it's OK to give us a point deduction when you didn't want to be involved with that when it got broke away in the first point? So, yes, we are, if we have spent what they're saying, 40 million more in the three seasons, we've broke the rules. Penalise every club. Don't just penalise Leicester and Forest and Everton because they're smaller clubs and it's easier to do it to. Fair play to Leicester for standing up to them. There's talk today that Leicester and Forest are going to go in together into a joint battle against the Premier League. Blimey. Who would, have, who would have thought about that? But if that is true, fair play for the clubs sticking together and going, if you're going to take all these big clubs and the big six on and say, you're OK, you can break the rules, but we're not going to penalise you very quickly. We'll just drag it out a little bit longer. So when the new FFP rules come in next season, oh, well, it's too late now, so you don't get penalised. This is where the, the thing sits. So for me, yes, point deduction by all means, but that only can happen when we're back in the Premiership, back in the premiership to have that point deduction. It shouldn't be happening in the Football League. If the Football League wants to do a point deduction, they have to do it over a period of three years of being back in the Football League for three years to see where our account's at. Fair. I, I, I mean, I completely hear you and, and, and get your point of view, but I mean, as a Leeds fan, our frustrations are that all three teams that finished above us last season all brought the rules. Leicester, Everton and Notts Forest. And, you, can, you know, it's it's... 
it's quite. I mean, something might come out. There was rumours that we'd broken the rules as well, but they were soon, 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 um, soon sort of quashed. So we didn't really. There was no sort of advance on that. But you could you could see it from a perspective. And I don't want to get into this too much because I know Martin and, and Matt don't really give a shit. But um, <laughs> but, but, but points deductions. That's what we want. Yeah, but I mean, I mean, I, I would welcome it this season. But I could have, I absolutely see where your frustrations would be, Martin. What do you? What, what's your thoughts? You obviously finished rock bottom last season. I know it wouldn't have made all that much difference to you. <laughs> no, yeah. it wouldn't have made much difference it to you. Made but any difference to, to us, I think the Premier League just needs to be a little bit more transparent. Really, I just don't think it's very transparent at all, and I think none of us really know the ins and outs of it. Like, it, like clearly, um, it, it drag on for ages. This with Leicester, it drag well into the middle of next season. They get promoted, nothing will happen immediately anyway. There, there'd be a legal battle now. You would imagine, Tom, wouldn't there? And it would, it would drag for some time. They fight their cause just like Forrest and Everton will, but it wouldn't have made any difference to us as, as a football club. But we were borderline it. You know, we were borderline. That, and I know that this summer business was done by doing loans because they couldn't go out and spend money and they had to balance the books. And they were very careful with, with, with the business we were doing down here because we were very close to financial fair play as well. Yeah. I just yeah. wanted to no, address fair... another thing as well that's, that's just been mentioned around the, the Leicester piece is about breaking the rules right now according to the FL. Because it's my understanding that they're projected to be in a bit of hot water if things don't change by the time that the books would need to be submitted. But actually, the only problem that the AFL have had is that Leicester didn't have to set out a business case because it wasn't for them to actually uh, be in a position where they needed to understand that at that point in time because they'd been in a different competition until that point in time. Tom, is that is that is that how Leicester fans see it as well? I think it is, yeah. I think you hit nerd on there. It was a difficult competition. The books didn't need to be submitted to the AFL at the time of where they should have been. And now they're saying, well, we want to see the books. Well, hang on a minute. We weren't needing to show you the books when this all happened. Like I say, if we, we break the rule, we break the rules, we'll take the punishment. But the, it's a premiership rule, not an EFL rule. So, yeah, books next season, completely different story when we have to submit them books to show them where we're at as a club. But And if at that point we have, we're still in the Football League and we're still in the Championship, Again, points deduction, it happens. It's uh, For me, it's a shocking rule anyway that clubs should get points deduction because you penalise the club by dropping them down. They're already in a financial mess. You have to look at the bigger picture. I talk about the Portsmouth. I talk about the Reddings. These clubs are going to end up going bust because of points deductions because you're taking them away from a division probably by the size of their clubs at. And every time you're giving them points deduction and you're relegating them, they're getting less and less revenue. Points deduction don't help football clubs. They destroy football clubs and to a point where non-existence. I, I, you know what I mean? There's got to be a better way for you know punishing football clubs than point deduction, in my view. And this ain't just because of what Leicester's done. If they've done it and the rules are there, the rules are there. But I think in a, a bigger picture for the Football League and clubs that have gone bust, look at Torquay, how many points deduction they've had over the years. This is one of the one great football club Torquay used to be. Now loundering in, what, the third or fourth of the National League South or Southern, looking like they could go bust as well. Do fans, like, I'll ask you guys, do you think penalising clubs by seeing them drop division after division after division to go and bust is the best thing for the football pyramid? Because surely that's not what football's about. I know we all have rivalries and we all have banter, but for me... We should be supporting Torquay. We should be supporting clubs that are really on the borderline of going out of the game because of a points deduction. I think there's a better I, way to do it. I I I I, I hear you, uh, but having been through it a, num- a couple of times with with, with Leeds and, and and obviously we we're sort of coming uh, or I've come out recently of, of the other end of it. I I almost feel there is no other alternative sanction because they've done it for so often now. And and I, if they were to change that. You're opening the can of worms, you know. You think, you know, when 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 is the cut off for, for points deductions? When do they decide actually a points deduction? But but what is the other other alternative? It's a fine, and 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 for richer clubs, it doesn't affect them. It simply doesn't affect them. Go on, Gilly. I've got a thought. Jail the people that mismanage the businesses, so we could have locked Ken Bates up and and actually target the people that make the decisions instead of impacting the fans and the clubs themselves. You make a point there, and I said jail them, but you, the Football League have to take responsibility for the sanctioning fit the proper. fit and proper. And half the time, yeah. these owners aren't fit and proper for the football club. You know, Reading fans will tell you now that 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 chairman has not been fit, fit and proper and was never fit and proper to run a football club. But now they're, they're quick enough to go, you deserve a points deduction. 
But you sanctioned someone buying that football club who was never fit and proper in the first place. So it's quick enough to chuck the points, but then you're sanctioning the sales. And over the last 10 years, how many football clubs have been brought by the wrong owners and run into the ground? You guys have had it at point, Leeds. Leeds you were in a point where you were in a, a, a right financial mess. Because I would argue we've almost it. all had it in here. Yeah, I know Ipswich were taking a downward spiral not so long ago with with under Marcus Evans and and and, and I mean Southampton haven't haven't probably felt that wrath as much. Yeah, 2000, um, 2009 we had big trouble. We, we had ten, ten point deduction. It, was, it we went into administration. The company that owned the football club did, but there was a ten point deduction, relegated us to League One at the time, and and the, and the club luckily got bought by somebody and trans you know transformed, but. Yeah, it, it hits the fans. It, it, it's it's just it's just a, a horrible situation to be in. That, the shit the hits thing, the fans, it? literally. It does. That's the biggest thing. These, the, the fans, the fans like. suffer. The fans do suffer, don't they, Tom? Because yeah. you know you you've only like with our American owners that come in, they just they were very upfront with us to begin with. We're just custodians of your club. We're they're here for a a a limited amount of time, so they can sell it for a profit, hopefully, for them. Then they move on. But I always say on Talking Town, there for the grace of God to go I when it comes to ownership. Look at Berry. Got promoted, didn't yeah. they, under, with Ryan yeah. Lowe and I think Stephen Schumacher is his coach. And it went yeah. bust, didn't they? And look at them, yeah. and look at them now. It's always the fans that suffer. And, you know, this is the it's, that's the wrong side of the coin for me, like you say. The the fit and proper persons, um, you know, that, that, that needs to be far more tighter in who can own a football club for me. No, I, I completely agree. Anyway, let's uh, great chat about uh, about point deductions and and let's hope. Uh, well, the four of us in here, let's hope Leicester do get one this season. Are we all in agreement on that? <laughs> yeah, maybe. Nice, no. Anyway, <laughs> do you know what? Show, I, if you, if you ask me um, that, if we've already finished above them, then uh, it'll be a, no, absolutely carry it into next season. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, somebody starting in the Premier League if we get promoted with them. Anyway, anyway. We'll come on to uh, we'll come on to a little bit about a bit more about the running if um, if everyone's okay with that. Um, we'll start with you, Martin. So what we've done, we've sent out a uh, a graphic to everybody tonight who's joined us, and we've asked them mm. to give us a bit of a rundown on how they feel the season's going to go. And we're going to come to each each club, I suppose, and representative of each club individually at different stages through tonight's tonight's episode. Um, but we will start with you, Martin, if you don't mind. Um, mm. This is the running for those of you that can see it. I was going to try and get it so we move to the side, but I'm not clever enough. Um, I don't know if, Gilly, you can maybe sort that for uh, in a minute or two when we do come on to it. But um, just looking at that image then, you've you, you've obviously seen it, um, seen it, Martin. You've obviously mm. got 10 games left. Um, you've broken those down, I suppose, for each club and how many points each team's going to finish on. And and, and yeah. if you just want to give us a bit of a give a run back on 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 where you see people finishing and, and on what points tally. Yeah, I've had, I've had a good I've had a good research of all the features, but I also watched a bit of YouTube content as well. There's there's some good creators that have been looking at like the average points that each club have picked up over the season and and sort of what sort of points tally their their finish on. But we really are at the business end of the season, aren't we? Where like th this is where it really counts. And I think this Easter Monday is huge for all of us, for all all clubs involved in, in this in this top two race. I think for 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 Leeds to to play whole, it's a really tough game, as we found out uh, down at St Mary's. Um, Rossini is a very good manager, very well organised side. So I think that's a really t really tough game for them. And then obviously the Foxes, they've got Norwich. Norwich are in really good form under David Wagner. They could have sacked him earlier in the season. They didn't. They stuck with him. Um, they're right in the mix for the playoffs. They're fighting for a playoff place and be, be between them. Settle down, Martin. Set, settle down, son. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, so I, I think, yeah, yeah. You, you actually hate Norwich. Or, or of course you do. Um, so they, they'd be it. They, I know that I, I'd like to see Coventry probably do it if there's any ever a team to do it. A little bit of a soft spot for them. But yeah. Um, yeah, I've kind of gone through. I think Leeds win it for me. I've looked at their fixtures, and if you look at like the average points per game they're getting at the moment, it's quite incredible. The return. I know you, you, there's there's two Leeds fans, and I'm not just saying it because of that I've been saying it for a while. I think well, they're averaging two two point eight four points per game at the moment. Leeds that give them 105 points if they do that. It's quite that would be an incredible return if they do that. They've got the more experienced manager as well for me in um, Daniel Farke. He's been there, seen it and done it with Norwich. I think the other three managers are just a little bit more inexperienced, probably in this business end of things. So I just think it's, it's he leads over the line. I just don't really see where Leeds are going to slip up. I look at, at Watford at the weekend. Could, you know, a few injuries I, I hear at Leeds, but 
should win that one. The whole City game looks tough on paper, as does the Coventry. But if they can get through the next three games in really good shape, it could be done and dusted by the time they play Southampton on the final game of the season. That's how, how I look at it. Um, I also think if Ipswich can, can beat Southampton, I think they'll fight it out with, with Leicester. But I've got an edgy feeling that I think Ipswich go on and do it. Um, there will be a shock. Um, I think Tom's going to hate me, but if you look at the average points per game that they're the, the return from at the moment, 2.7 points per game, it'd give them 98 points if they keep going like that. It would be quite an incredible return, but they need to beat Southampton. I would say if they can beat Southampton in that game on Monday, it would give them belief. But I think um, Leicester fans would be hoping that Southampton, um, yeah, get a result in that one, you would say. Right. Interesting. So, so just sorry, just to run run that back, um, Martin. You've got mm. Leeds top, finishing top. Leeds top. I'm gonna, I'm gonna. He's gonna hate me, Tom, but have a feeling that Ipswich <laughs> might might just edge it. But I think it's real neck and neck. I can't call it. I think it's between the two. Um, I think Southampton. I think we're finished fourth. I don't see us being in the in the top two contention. I think we're finished where we are now. That's my gut feeling, and I just think it'd be a be a be a shootout between. Ipswich and um, and Leicester for for second place, but Leeds win it for me. Yeah. And, and and in terms of sort of your your fixtures, you've obviously got quite a condensed uh, fixture list compared yeah, to everyone tough. else with the, with the cancelled games. Um, you've got a lot of games. I think you're playing three, two, two or three times a week right up to the end yeah. of the season now. Um, it's a game game so, every three days. Game every three days. Yeah. we got Middlesbrough tomorrow. So obviously, it's St Mary's. We then head to Portman Road on Monday to play. Ipswich, we've got Blackburn next weekend. So I say the next three are crucial. And then we've got three home games in a row. Coventry, Watford, Preston, all at St. Mary's. I prefer us playing away from home than I do at St. Mary's. And then we've got Cardiff away, Leicester away. Then we've got Stoke at home and then head to Ellen Road on the final day. Um, that If we could get, I just, I think it's going to be tough for us. We need to find eight wins, really. Um, maybe more. Out of so, the ten, I think you know it's, it, it would be hell, hell of a hell of an ask of Russell Martin to do it, but he just really needs to get back to playing his best team, play, uh, you know, round round, round pegs in, in round holes, and and it, he's tinkered a little bit recently, and um, it, 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 we're leaking goals, so it worries me. Fair. But that's my gut feeling fair. on it. No, fair, fair, Martin. And uh, just uh, just out of those ten fixtures, then uh, how many points do you have? Do you see Southampton uh, taking from from those last ten? 20 maximum maximum be, 20 if we, if we got to 25 it would be, be, be unbelievable to get to 98 but i don't think we, i don't think we will my gut feeling so you think you think 25 le so, so let's let's say 20 uh, uh re realistic titles so you, you you've got southampton finishing on 93 points yeah yeah around about 93 points i reckon good stuff cool okay Thanks ever so much for that. We will come to each and everyone um, and get your team's thoughts in it as, we, as we're going through. But I just wanted to have a chat now. Um, a couple of you have already men mentioned uh, management uh, and managing how important they they potentially could be at this this stage of the season. And obviously, Matt, you've been there, done it with McKenna last season, uh, still riding that crest of a wave. Um, how much do you think, and I've already sort of given, given him his flowers uh, already uh, based on, you know, the similarities and, and the tune he gets out of out, out of his team and his players. Um, obviously, he, he's, he's, he's also, you've also, you had the benefit of, of a couple of the internationals dropping out from and retiring from international football as well, when potentially they could have been going to AFCON or, or, or out to Australia as well. Um, so what, how important is McKenna going to be to to you guys in in this in this running? And what 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 I suppose what attributes has he got that maybe you know Martin hasn't got or Maresca hasn't got? I think with McKenna when he when he was appointed and you know he, he came in, he's always had this vibe about him that things would work out for him at town. Do you know what I mean? You, sometimes you get managers in, don't you? you? Think this isn't going to this this isn't going to end well. Like when we had Paul Lambert come in for town, right? You just knew at some point he was going to get the elbow, the old Spanish archer. But with McKenna, he's always had this vibe. You know, like Ready Break, got that golden glow around him. He's always <laughs> had that kind of around him. And look, I've had, I, I will admit, I've had a bit of a love hate relationship with him at some point. I remember, you know, back when, uh, on the uh, last year, February, Valentine's Day, we drew new new at Bristol Rovers. And he was tinkering with the team. And, you know, we had Connor Chaplin and Broadhead on the bench. And, you know, we, we, we were dropping down the table while Sheffield Wednesday were getting further away from us. And, you know, I, I, 
and we, we, we had a game with Sheffield Wednesday. We went two down. We could easily have gone three down if Michael Smith hadn't had like, a terrible touch around the keeper. It was like a, it was like a bloody beach ball at Walton on the knees. And he went flying off. We could easily have gone three down. So there's been lots of sliding doors for Kieran, to be fair. But, you know, sometimes you, you, to, 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 to be on the right side of luck and be that lucky manager, um, and, then, and, and then you combine that with kind of the talent level, the opportunity that he's got and the backing he's got, uh, and we find ourselves where we are in, in the championship. But um, I don't know. It, that, I mean, how does the story end for McKenna? Like, he's been linked with clubs. He's been linked with Brighton. He's been linked with Crystal Palace. Um, you know, but it seems like he's enjoying being part of the project. Um, you know, we, in a week's time, we go to Norwich, Carrow Road. They've got they've, they've had this decade of domination, I like to call it, over us. Um, you know, can we go to Carrow Road and finally get a win? We have not won there for God knows how long. I couldn't even tell you. They've even beaten them at Pullman Road since about 2009. We drew 2-2 this season. I, I, that bit me on the arse a little bit because I said they were going to get a shellacking. <laughs> God damn it. But, um, yeah, I mean, look, as you rightly said earlier, he's still a novice manager. I mean, look, it wasn't so long ago. He was working in youth football for, for, for Tottenham and Manchester United. And we've given him a chance. And that was only like two and a half, three seasons ago, less than that. So we will see. But sometimes, you know, you throw people into the deep end and, you know, they, they as you said earlier, they come out with flowers, don't they? So we, we will see. It's a journey into the unknown, but sometimes the unknown, it, 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 it favours the underdog, which we are certainly in, in this battle. Oh, you're on mute, Luke. I'm muted because my dog's going mad in background. So, um, <laughs> he likes what I was so, saying. Angered him. <laughs> um, yeah, sorry. There's, there's actually a lot of love in the comments for, for McKenna. I've, I've seen, um, you know, record breaking season replica. for Ipswich. Yeah, McKenna is a manager going places. Ipswich will want to hang on. But I suppose the main question is that's come from these comments for me is are Ipswich worried about losing McKenna, depend, regardless of what happens this season? Oh, God, yeah. I mean, we talk about this all the time with Saul Kids out. It's always coming in. I mean, look, it's, it's the Vincent Company story again, isn't it? I mean, do you go up with, say we get promoted, do you go up with the club and and and, and and try and do something in the Premier League with them? Or is do you go to a Brighton or West Ham or now or a Wolves or whoever it might be, that kind of mainstay club that is looking to push on into, you know, to, you know, they've, I mean, Brighton and West Ham have obviously been in Europe previously um, this season, looking to do it again. So do you chance your arm there? We, you can see how quickly your stock can fall, as we said earlier, with, with Vincent Company. And, um, you know, but McKenna seems to be a sensible guy. Look, he's not played he's not played the game at any level. I mean, he retired before he was even 21, I think, when he was at Tottenham. So he's, he's, been, he's been coaching himself to be a coach all this time now. He's 36, 37, 38, something like that. Um, so he doesn't really come with the ego of what a player used to have. He just seems very sensible, analytical, very respectful, humble person. Um, certainly that's what he presents to the cameras. I don't know what, I've never met him, so I don't know what he's like behind, behind the scenes. But um, I think he'll make the decision that's good for him, whether or not he'll think continuing with Ipswich as a project is good. As you guys said earlier, different kettle of fish in the Premier League. It's very difficult to pick up points. Or do you go on and, you know, pick up the baton with a club that plays your style of football, be it a Wolves, a, a West Ham, Brighton, a Palace, whatever, whatever it might be. They're the options, I think, for him. Yeah, fair, fair, fair point. And and just sticking with the theme of managers, then Tom, um, Maresca said it was wasn't a big game for them. It was just another game. Uh, quite recently, um, do you Oof. think that shows a bit of a lack of lack of respect uh, to, to, to to I suppose to the fixture, but but to, to the league as well? And do you think that could be could be his downfall? And obviously, your form suffered almost immediately off the back of that. So will will. Will he have the experience, I suppose, coming from City and being a number two? Or a, 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 was he the youth manager or was he Pep's number two at one stage, wasn't he? Pep, as well, I Pep's think. number two was last season yeah. when he won the treble. Yeah, that's right. Um, so, I mean, he's obviously learned a lot from Pep, but there's a lot of bad habits that Pep's probably got as well that he might have picked up along the way. So, so wh wh where do you think Maresca stands in, 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 this, uh, in this battle? I think, firstly, the comment he made was a stupid comment. As soon as I read it, I was like, that's the worst thing he could have said. He put the fire in the bellies of the Leeds players. The team talk was done. Uh, I think that was very inexperienced management from him, in my view. He's not up there with the, the, the elite managers of Alex Ferguson, Wenger, who could get away with doing these mind games and saying comments like that, thinking they would have a big effect on the team they were playing. But that really, that that that... 
oh, I just I just cringed when I heard it. <laughs> I was just thinking, why have you said something like that? You know, and it was the biggest game of the season for us as well. Of course, it was. If we'd beaten you, we would have gone twelve points clear. I think at the time in the uh, in that point of the season, it was a silly comment to come out with, uh, and yeah, it probably has backfired on him massively and hopefully the players have not looked at it too much but look I think you remember this is Mareska's proper first full season and a manager he had a little bit at Palmer where it didn't really work out for him but he's never really had a full-time manager's job you know so he's going to make mistakes yes he's worked with the best manager in the world let's put it that way in Pep Guardiola but that doesn't mean you become the best manager in the world from working. Second best after Bielsa, by the way. But yeah, I'll tell, I'll tell you point. <laughs> Sorry. According I, uh... to Pep Guardiola, that is. According to Pep. I forget that. But yeah, you know, you, you don't become a great manager just because you've worked with the great managers. As the saying goes, you can be a great football player and world class doesn't mean you're going to be a great manager. Look at Rooney. doesn't mean nothing. You can be, have all the ability in the world, but stepping up and being a manager is completely different. I think McKenna's shown that. Didn't really have a playing career. But then has become out, had a great coaching career and worked his way up the football league. And now he's got himself in a position to have a, a crack at it as a, a championship manager or league one, then championship. And he's now taken it and the players are respecting it for how he's done it. Enzo's obviously come in and turned a club round. Let's not get it wrong. We were in a, a massive, massive well, dark place after relegation last year, you know, to get the players on side. Yeah, you've signed some players, but you signed characters. He signed players that were fighting for the shirt. What we were missing, you know, I don't look at the players who went down and left the fighters. Madison, pretty boy. Tillerman, pretty boy. They didn't want to fight for the shirt. He brought in a leader in Cody. He brought in Harry Winks, who's a brawler. He brought in players that wanted to fight for him and the club. And if you listen to all the, the players speak about him, they speak so highly because of the amount of hours he puts in to try and work out to beat the opposition. And give that to the players. So, look, first full season, if for me, he's done a fantastic job, you know, but maybe the inexperienced comments, that's where it could be his downfall at the end of the season. Yeah, no, I, I completely agree. I mean, uh, Maresca's not getting as much love in the comments, I'll be honest with you. Um, that's understandable. <laughs> nat naturally, it's a Leeds podcast. Um, but, um, Jay's got asked another question. Do you think the comments might might make the players doubt Maresca's ability? I, I suppose he's, he's guessing his ability or, or his or his his, his uh, managerial prowess um, up until the end of the season. As I said before, the the form certainly suffered since those comments. So, do you think do you think that that's put any doubt in the players' mind minds? Oh, hello. Sorry, I broke up there. What was that, bud? Sorry, mate. I was just <laughs> saying there. Do you think? Do you think the that that those comments and certainly the the form resulting of those comments since then might have put any doubt in 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 the players? Obviously, you've got players who've been about a bit in in, in Harry Winks and they played under some some great coaches. Do you think they might might then be doubting doubting Maresca by in any in any way? No, no. I th I think as I said earlier, I think that the blip had to come at some point. We were never going to keep winning games and go on a, a stupid run of to the end of the season without losing some more games. The championship is the toughest league in the world. I've watched Leicester enough enough years in this division. It is not easy to get out of. I think th the biggest turning point for us when we lost to you boys was obviously the loss of Vardy for a couple of games. Ricardo was a massive loss. I said it before, Ricardo is the heartbeat of that team. When Ricardo doesn't play, we have to play Hamza Chowdhury. Hamza Chowdhury is nowhere near the class or any ability of, of Ricardo Pereira in the middle of that midfield. Is Pereira your captain? Uh, he's been captain most of the season when he's played, yeah. He has put the armband on. We've not really got one club captain this season. Mariska made it clear from the start. I've got six or seven captains. I will not name one as the club captain. So, depending Ooh, who's that played... That gives me shudders. That gives <laughs> me shudders about plays, a leadership group last season. Yeah, but <laughs> yeah. depending who's played, it's normally Vardy. Vardy starts and he takes the armband. If Vardy doesn't start, and Pereira takes the armband normally out the two of them. But... I think that's been our biggest problem for the last four or five games is losing Ricardo Pereira. What's given me confidence going into this back end of the season is the performance at Stamford Bridge. First half, we did all right against them. Second half, we should have beaten them. You know, if, if you don't get the red card, we probably go on to win that game. But the performance of having Wilford and Diddy back in, the, in that eight role, it just makes a big difference. And I think that's why I'm still confident we'll go up because of having and Diddy and Ricardo have both been declared fit for tomorrow back in this squad going into that final nine games for us. Yeah. 
Wicked. Thanks ever so much, Tom. And and, and last but not leastly, Martin, we'll, we'll have a bit of a chat uh, around Russell Martin. Obviously, mm. um, you've got the, 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 the you know, you, you're playing um, you're playing Ipswich very soon. He had he had a bit of a bit of a spell. Well, I think the majority of his career was actually at the Ipswich, wasn't it? Um, was um, was Martin's career? Martin played for Norwich, didn't he? For for a long time, Russell Martin. Played at Norwich, yeah. He's, he's yeah, that's right. Um, I thought I was getting mixed up with somebody else, but but obviously he played there. Um, what what what? He, he's obviously been a manager for, for for quite some time. Was it Milton Keynes? I think and Swansea he didn't do overly well at Swansea, but we did all right with an average average side. I think he yeah. moved them from sort of lower mid table up to higher mid table in the two seasons he was there. Plays a particular style. It doesn't seem to change that. Do you think that could be his downfall, or do you think he's got enough? Is he's he got enough plans? Has he got a plan B? Is, I, you you watch him every week. Tell us. Yeah, there's a lot of talk about the plan B. Does Russell Martin have a plan B? He's 38 years old, Russell. So he's a young he's a young manager. Like I say, he had, he had the season at Milton Keynes, and and then he had, he had a couple at Swansea. Um, it's not that he, he's he's got a style of football that he wants to play. It's it's using the goalkeeper almost as an outfielder. Plays a lot a lot out from the goalkeeper, um, and they like to keep possession of the ball and, and work it through. Sometimes they're not quick and as fluid as they need to be like say Ipswich are they just moved the ball a bit quicker than us um he's got a very very good squad of players I think he's got an incredible squad of players when you look at what he's got it is disposable right now I think he's got Premier League players all over the place um it's just utilizing everyone and putting them in the, in the right positions now we had an injury to um Flynn Downs who's on loan from West Ham he's been outstanding for us in central midfield and Russell didn't trust a, a young lad that we brought in in the summer. We paid over £10 million players a pound for a player called Shay Charles. As a holding midfielder, Shay Charles, he plays in the six. He didn't trust him when he really needed him, when Downs got injured. And he kind of almost made so many changes to accommodate the loss of Flynn Downs. So it's really important that Flynn's fit now for, for the final 10 games. But yeah, he, he doesn't have a plan B. He, he want to continue to play... The way that he plays, he trusts it. His players trust it. And the arm at St Mary's a lot, and they hiss and they boo, and they don't like the way it goes. You know, from fullback to fullback, the fullback football. But it is what it is. It's not going to change anytime soon. So let's, you know, they have to get behind it as a fan base now and back it because it won't change. And and you know, and if he doesn't get get us automatic promotion or promotion back to the Premier League, the you know the owners will make a call on it. You know, their aim at the start of the season was to get automatic promotion back to the Premier League. They said it was an absolute necessity, which it is financially because of the, the players and the contracts and, and what they have to shell out. Um, and then if they don't go back up, the, the club will be it'll be in a bit of a mess come come the summer. So, um, yeah, he, he's, he'd be judged at the end of the season. But you know, we're 25 games unbeaten. That's, that's some going by manager. It is. Um, I, now, I, actually, you'll have to forgive me. I don't remember which game this was, Martin, but there was a game that I watched the end of and he, he spat his dummy out a little bit, didn't he? Uh, I don't remember who he came on the pitch. He wouldn't shake somebody's hand, um, the opposition goalkeeper. Was it in the cup, maybe? No, it was the Millwall goalkeeper. It was the Millwall it was, goalkeeper. It was Millwall. Now, we've had a lot of goalkeepers time ways, and you'll see it, Matt, at, at, at Portman Road. Gilly, you'll see it at, you know, at Leeds United. Tom, you see it all the time. Goalkeepers, they... They waste time, don't they? And they can play for a point, don't they? A lot of teams. Yeah, in the yeah, league. yeah, yeah. I, 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 I know. I, I work with a goalkeeper that plays in the championship, and he, and I, I know for a fact he wastes time. He's told me he will. <laughs> you know, got, I mean, got, are you allowed to name him? Yeah, yeah. Asmir <laughs> Begovic. Uh, um, All right, PPR. nice. Yeah, I work with him, and like you know, I, I know a referee um, that the referees a bit of championship football. He goes, oh, "I booked your mate the other day for time wasting," but they do. <laughs> But at the end of the game, you shake hands with everyone, no matter what. He, yeah, it was against his principles and, and whatever, but it looks sour. It doesn't reflect on the football club particularly well. It creates noise that you don't want around your football club and negativity that you don't want. I just shake everyone's hand at the end of it. It's a game of football. There's far bigger things in the world going on. Do you know what I mean? Just shake hands. That's yeah. my opinion yeah. on it. Yeah, I mean, I... I... We've been lucky enough to have some some real good managers in in recent times, in and uh, and, and managers that have a uh, cer- We've had certainly lots of good certainly managers two, as well. <laughs> certainly two, anyway. Yeah, um, that 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 have almost led by example, and I, and I include Absolutely. Parker in this. Um, and I think I think Marcelo Bielsa is probably the only other one that I would probably include in in this re- of recent. Maybe maybe Javi Gra- Javi Gracia, but we didn't really see enough of him. Um, but they 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 have a real. 
real sort of belief that football should be played a certain way. And and, and as you say, there if you shake hands with everybody, you you know there's there's a certain level of respect that that should be given to everybody and anybody, whether they're a ball boy or whether they're uh, a chief executive of a football club. Um, now, obviously, when when I seen Russell Martin do that, I think it showed a little bit of immaturity. Obviously, he's a young Massive. manager. He is a young manager. Yes. Um, but but yeah, I think and I think I so the first thing I thought when I it was in my head was what would I think if my manager did, did that? You know, as a footballer or as as a, as a as a rugby player, as any sport. But it, it's 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 almost setting the wrong example. And I just wondered whether or not that might have had an impact on players and rubbed off on them the wrong way you know a similar similar question to tom do you think potentially the players might have maybe lost a bit of respect for him for that going a little bit on this i've uh, been the privilege to work for a professional rugby club for 12 years uh, from a very young age to the leicester tigers uh, so i grew up work where you learned respect very quickly working those boys as a groundsman so i worked for 12 years First, I walked in. Martin Johnson was sitting next to me in a chair. <laughs> I was like, he just looked at me and went, "You don't clue who I am." No, I haven't. I'm a football fan. I hadn't got a clue who he was. From then on, though, I learned the respect how they build respect and how referees in the Premiership for rugby are completely different to football. You know, I'd gone and watched football as a kid, and the referees getting absolutely destroyed by players in the Premiership. The, the players walk on to go, "Thanks, ref," and just walk off. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's a yeah, massive, it's, it's, massive difference when you look at the respect at, between the two cultures of rugby and football. And I, I think the the point I look at it from a game the other week uh, in the FA Cup was Mark Robbins having to go at a ball boy, a ball boy because he he yeah. left because he held the ball yeah. a bit longer. And then obviously Cough scored. He then ran in front of the ball boy and I go at him. What's yeah. that setting to another generation? But that's acceptable. Yeah. We, look, we all yeah. get frustration by time wasting. I think, like you said earlier, we've all sat in our grounds where teams have come and as soon as they get the first goal, you know what they've come for. They're happy to sit back now for the next 45 minutes, just hoping that you can't break them down. So it is frustrating at times. I know what your boys are saying. I can promise you that now. Yeah, yeah. I think I think, I think, think, I think, there's a golfing class ultimately between both codes of rugby and and and, and football. I think, I think, Football, with the amount of money that's involved in it, they could learn a lot of a lot from from rugby, both with with the with the video refereeing and everything else. But that's a whole another debate. We could probably spend another hour or two on that, you know. Um, but just to go back to my the the, the, the question about respect, Martin, do, uh, have have you have you seen any of the players react since then in terms of their perform? Not necessarily their performances, but maybe, I mean. You're in the ground week in week out. You know how people are when they're coming off the field, or, or, or and whether or not they've lost potentially that bit of respect for Russell Martin. No, I don't think so. I, I think sort of certainly a lot of fans looking in from the outside would have would have um, looked at it in a not great way. And, and, and as as a, someone that's watched football for for 35 years plus, I was really disappointed with it. Like I, my, my dad's watched Southampton since he, he was a young boy. You know, he was the same. Really disappointed in it. But all in all. The one thing Russell has done down here, he's really brought the fan base together. We had a really broken fan base a year ago. Everybody hated each other. Nobody had a good word to say about the football club. We had two dreadful managers in the space of six months. The club was the pits, really. We lost a lot of players, and it was a big job to take on. And I think the 25-game unbeaten run that Russell put us on and and what that the feeling that it brought around the football club to give us that opportunity where we could bounce back to the Premier League I think he, he he's bought himself a lot with that with that run I've got to say he has got the fan base on board at the moment the majority of them there are a few that are skeptical a bit like myself or whether the style of play would play you know would play out in in playoff semi-finals of playoffs will we get away playing with the way we play and that will be on the manager and there's a lot of people skeptical about that but I think he's got a lot of people on side down here I've got to say fair play Fair play. Um, right, we'll come on to the second, um, the second instalment of the, uh, and we'll, we'll, we'll the running, and we'll uh, we'll come to you, Matt, if you don't mind. Uh, where are we? Where are we? Where are we? Share screen, and I can hopefully get that up for everyone else to see. There we go. Wicked. So there we are, Matt. Give us your run rundown, and who's who's finishing where? Uh, for you. I'll give you the rundown. Yeah. So I've got Southampton finishing. With 90 points, Martin. You ain't getting 20. Come on. It's not fairy tale. <laughs> I, can see, I can see you out, out of the 10. I can see you winning five. Probably drawing uh, two. 
I can see you probably dropping three games, Leeds and Leicester, I think. I can see you maybe losing at Blackburn or Cardiff, potentially. But I still think that's a really good return. I mean, look how competitive is this? We're talking about the fourth place team in 90 points. They yeah. got you second yeah, last great. season. See how crazy it is th th this year. I mean, bloody old Luton got promoted out of the playoffs on 80 points, didn't they? Mm -hmm. um, so I think probably Southampton's going to finish on 90. And if I'd said to you, Martin, at the start of the season, you're going to finish on 90 points, you'd probably think you'd be promoted, wouldn't you? Automatically. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, you're betting your hand off for 90 points. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, in third, I think I think you're going to finish third. That's where I think we'll finish. I've been a little bit conservative with our, um, with our points total. You're always a little bit more harder with your own child, aren't you? But I, could, I think <laughs> I, could, I could see maybe a run of draws coming. I was chatting to the Crunchyroll of our show. Rich Moss, we were talking about this earlier today. I can see probably I can see probably us against Blackburn tomorrow on Sky being a draw. I still think going to Ewood Park is going to be a tough one. They need points to stay up. I think Town and Southampton will be a, be a draw on Monday. And I think potentially going to Carroll Road could be a draw, given it was at Pullman Road um, earlier in the season. So I think we'll finish on 94 points. I still think we'll probably, even though we've lost five all season, I do think we'll probably, I do think we'll probably drop a game or two. Hull, I mean, look, we, we swiped Hull at Pullman Road quite easy, 3-0. But I think going there might be a different story. And I agree with Liam Rosinia being a really good manager. If McKenna was to go, I certainly think he'd be on our on our, our, our list of a new manager. I think he's good. He was a good pundit as well on Sky, if you think back. Um, he was. So I think he's good. And I, we could potentially, our game at Coventry with them now being in the FA Cup semi-final against Man United, that's been put back now until the penultimate game of the season, midweek, April the 30th. That's going to be a tricky one as well. I think we're going to finish on 94 points. Again, bloody Arthur would be champions if you tell me that in August. <laughs> but there you go. Isn't it? Yeah. And then I went in. So what the, the flip of the coin is, is it going to be Leicester or Leeds as champions, right? <laughs> and I went into this thinking Leeds are probably going to be the champions. And Tom, I've got you as champions. I've got you finished on 99 points. Um, so look, Le uh, Leeds, I think, have been phenomenal at home. Look, you absolutely took us to school at home. Not many teams have really taken us to school this season. West Brom did at the Hawthorns, albeit they only beat us 2-0. Should have been 3-0. My namesake, Matt Phillips, missed the chance from about two yards out. But Leeds really took us to school at Ellen Road. And, you know, Not going to lie, Matt. I thought that's who was coming on tonight. and I was slightly yeah. disappointed. Yeah, sorry. Sorry, I, the disappointment. <laughs> is, you know, I'm sorry about that. But, um, yeah, I think Leeds will finish with 97. Um, I could see you winning four, drawing three again. I think you could drop one against either maybe Burrow or Coventry. Those are away games for you. I think they could be tough. Um, you, you just never know with the championship, do you? I mean, look, you went, went, you had two Yorkshire derbies, didn't you, in quick succession? Drew at yeah. Huddersfield, but beat Chef Wed. And a resurgent yeah. Chef of Wednesday as well. So you really don't know. So I've got you of 97. I've got Leicester finish on 99. They've got the game in hand. I think they'll win five, draw two, potentially lose two. I think Bristol City is a tough game tomorrow, I think that is. And um, West Bromwich Albion, I really like. Like I say earlier, we they... they they, they really did a number on us at the Hawthorns. I think Carlos Coolbrand's a really good manager. Again, I would have him on our on our radar if McKenna was to go. I just really like, we've, we've shipped a lot of goals this season. And of course, he is a Bielsa protege, isn't he, right? So, I mean, perhaps he'd be on your radar, who knows? But um, So, I've got less to finish. You've scored a lot, though, haven't you? You've scored a lot of goals. And not, not only have you yeah. scored a lot of goals, you've shared them around quite a lot. Yeah, we have. We have. I mean, when McKenna came in here, I thought he was going to be like a really conservative kind of manager, to be honest with you, score a lot of goals and keep it tight at the back. And that was kind of, look, League One's different gravy, in it? But I mean, that was kind of the story in League One. But we've gone into, look, my favourite era of Ipswich Town managers as a, as, a, as a kid growing up was Joe Royal. Bloody hell. I mean, we beat Crew 6-4 <laughs> once. <laughs> we scored about 90 goals and let in 89. It's unbelievable. Finish, and finished third. There's lots of hallmarks of this season that are kind of replicating that Joe Royal area. And, uh, you know, we were very unlucky not to go up in, in first or second that season. We did finish third on about 89 points, I think. I think we're going to finish third again, but with 94. But I can see Leeds, 97, Leicester, 99. But look, they, they, these are games where, you know, that you could flip a coin. It could, e it could easily turn. But for all four teams to get into 90 points, which I'm predicting, uh, is unheard of in, 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 in the championship. Yeah, yeah. Thank you so much for that, mate, Matt. Um, yeah, it's 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 really interesting, and it's it's you know it, for the neutral, it's probably quite good to watch. But for me, I'm shitting myself every game. Like I yeah. just don't want to drop points. And I'll be honest, like I go into every game and I, I expect the worst, and then it just it doesn't seem to happen. But it's almost inevitable that it feels like it's going to happen. Um, we've obviously the next 
segment or bit, if you like, is we're going to talk about sort of squads for the running. We, we're, we're obviously quite lightweight after, after the, um, excuse me, after they did a bit of a, <coughs> it swallowed my own tongue then. Um, uh, we, we've, we've, we've had an unfortunate um, international break. We've had the, the Welsh lads, unfortunately, uh, go out, uh, four of them playing for us, one of them coming off injured, one missing the... Uh, the final penalty as well. So, we, you know, we don't know what sort of state they're going to be in emotionally. We've had Willy Nonto, Ilya Gruev, Rutter, all have knocks of some some sort. So we, we, we're a patched up side for this, certainly for Watford tomorrow. Um, what's the shape of your squads looking like after this international break? But more for the sort of immediate future rather than the sort of the running. Um, we'll start with you then, Tom. Any, any, any doubts? Obviously, you mentioned that Pereira and Ndidi are back. Which is you're probably good news for you, but is there anything anything else more more? Uh, so, worrying? no, I wouldn't say worrying wise. I think the biggest news, obviously, was uh, the news that Vardy is fit after a calf strain that he missed against Chelsea. The shit house is back to shit house for the rest of the season. Uh, Obviously, and Didi and Ricardo are available. Dennis Pratt comes back into the availability as well. You can play a number eight. So he's obviously a, a very good Belgium international player to bring back into our squad. I think the only ones who have got knocked during the international breaks were Tom Cannon uh, and Ben Nelson. And then long term is obviously uh, McAtee still out with a, a knock. He's two or three weeks away. So before the international break, we had a bit of a hitty list. It seems like Leeds are now taking the, the bit of the injury list and Leicester have started to get some of their key pl- players back for the, the, the running. Yeah, yeah. I think I think I think this I think this this period as well, this busy Easter period where everyone's off work and everyone's hammered and eating loads of chocolate and that, this is this is quite an important stage of the season when there's four teams in, potentially involved in this running. Um so I think I think these next two fixtures are, are for me the most crucial up until the rest of the season. I think if, if any of the four teams can get through these two fixtures with six points, I think they'll go a long way on to uh, to, to continue in that form up until the next season. Martin, how's, how's the squad shaping up, mate, for uh, for this weekend? Yeah, we should be really happy that the international break coming it did and we were out of the FA Cup. It gave us an opportunity to get a few faces fit because we, we lost Ryan Fraser in the Millwall game at home. We lost him for a month with a knee injury and he's been so good for us. He's on loan from Newcastle. We've been outstanding. And we would have gone we would have gone to Leicester, gone to the KP and not had Carl Walker Peters as well. He's been out injured and he would have been, he would have been a massive miss there for us. He's one of our best players on our side, Carl Walker Peters, along with Ryan Fraser. They're both available for selection, as my Russell said, which is brilliant. Um David Brooks has come back from uh, international duty. He wasn't well for a few days. He didn't play a great deal of football while his way. He came on as a sub in the game against Poland. Um he came on as a sub and he went and off. They as took a him sub off, didn't they? Yeah. Yeah, and he, he's he's just been unwell, so I'm not sure he'll start tomorrow. But he's available for selection. Jan Bednarek was the same. He's come back. He's fit and available. So Russell's got a full strength squad available, which is really good. Um, the only abs- absentee is Ross Stewart, who we signed in in the summer, and he's not really kicked a ball since anyway. So we've written him off anyway. We haven't. Re- no one's really right. thought about him. So all in all, I'm really happy with our squad, and we're going to need it. With the ten games that we've got to play, so we're in a good place. Yeah, this is this chat's. I wish we hadn't bothered. It's making me more nervous. Like it's, you know, <laughs> we've got we're in. We've got we're, we're having to rent like St. Jimmy's hospital beds for for our players. There's that many. There's that many on the um, on the injury treatment. And uh, yeah, I think I think I think I think we might be up against it this weekend. Matt, how's the squad looking there? I think I think relatively good. Yeah, relatively good for us. Yeah, George Hurst is back on the grass. We mentioned earlier, he got injured in that Boxing Day game against Leicester. Whether or not he'll return this season, I don't know. One person we know isn't going to be playing again this season is Wes Burns, who's been pivotal for us really on the right-hand side. He did his hamstring against Sheffield Wednesday. We beat Sheffield Wednesday 6-0 on, you know, everything was rosy in the garden, but that injury that he got in the first half, um, you know you know, when a player goes down and you just think, this ain't looking good. Um, <laughs> everyone had that kind of vibe about it. And so it, 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 that's a bit of a killer blow for us. I mean, he's been a bit of a tall player. Again, a Paul Cook signing that McKenna has managed to get the best out of. Um, so he's going to be a big miss for us. But we've got Mari Hutchinson on loan from, from Chelsea. He can play in the number 10 role, all play out on that right-hand side. So as long as he stays fit, we're looking good. If we were to lose someone of his ilk, then to, to, to lose both right-sided players would, would, would be a blow for us. 
Connor Chaplin didn't surprisingly he didn't play against Sheffield Wednesday. He's been pretty much a mainstay for us all season. Um, he's in double figures, I think, for goals for us. And uh, he didn't play against Sheffield Wednesday. We, we, McKenna is always sort of plays his cards close to his chest on terms of injuries. So whether or not he returns tomorrow against Blackburn, I'll have to see. I've not seen his press conference that he did today. We've had Cameron Bay Burgess away with Australia, um, central defender. So he's had to go all the way to Sydney to come back again to go to Ewood Park. Is that going to be too much for him? Don't know. A lot of travel, 24 hours each way. George Edmondson could come in and replace him. That's happened before. Happened against West Bromwich Aaron at the Hawthorns. So we're pretty much in good shape. Um, but West Burns is going to be a huge miss. I mean, we were... We were two one down against Bristol City on Sky uh, a few weeks ago, and Burns came off the bench and you know got man of the match from everybody. Only played twenty minutes and turned the game on its head. So he will be a big miss for us. But Amari Hutchinson, Chaplin, Marcus Harness, Broadhead, we still got some good players there. And you know Broadhead played against Finland and Poland in those Euro qualifiers, as did Kiefer Moore. They've come through with no injuries, so we're, we're looking all right to be honest. Yeah, that's not helped me at all. Cheers for that. Yeah, yeah, sorry um, about that. I thought you were <laughs> uh, Yeah, no, I mean, sounds really, really positive. And I think before we did a show before before the international break, and I put a poll out. I says, I says, has has it come at the right stage? Because we were looking a bit leggy. Um, we were starting, to, you know, we were struggling. We were getting results, but we we, we were struggling. And and Gilly will back this up. We, we looked we looked tired, didn't we? Knackered. <laughs> we, got, yeah. we got told this before we went to Ellen Road, though. Oh, they're looking leggy. They're looking knackered. Yeah. You've been 3 0 up at half time. Yeah. And, yeah. And, and, nah. and, and, Go on. And the, conversation, <laughs> the, conversa the conversation was that actually the international breaks come. I, I disagreed, but the, 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 the general consensus was that it had come at a good time, this international break, and that everybody was, you know, happy for the rest. Now, the international breaks being everyone's like, Fuck the international break. We don't ever want to see one of them again in our <laughs> life. And, and and we're in a position now where, you know, we're probably going to be going into Watford with half of our probably starting 11, maybe not available, maybe up to up to half of them. You, you know, Gruev, Nonto, Rutter, certainly. Roberts might have been in for a start. Um, and yeah, so so we're in a position now where we're missing some, some, some certainly some key players. Thankfully, hopefully not for too long. Um I think yeah, I think some of the comments on that were were, were around um, the, the a misconception because it was right. We're not in the Premier League anymore. A lot of those international players that we did have, they've moved on, and it's kind of almost uh, oh shit. Yeah, we've still got quite a few international players, so it's not a break. They they're not getting a break. We as fans, we've got an international break. We've got to deal with the fact that we don't get to watch any Championship football. <laughs> we don't get to find out a little bit more about the story of the season. But you know, Kamara went. Kamara was one that spoke about uh, that people had spoken about looking leggy. He played a lot of football. He'd, he'd been um, playing in midfield and he'd been getting all over the pitch, and he'd looked a little bit leggy. He'd gone in his place. So you know, it, it's not that they've necessarily had a rest. We've just had to deal without having a domestic football during that period. That's all. And if you look at you know, each of our sides can list off players that that have been missing. And invariably, it's the more impactful players that go on international breaks because they're the ones that are getting picked for international sides. Do yeah. Do you yeah, lads at Leeds though not think to yourselves like you know even though you're you're leggy, look at the quality you've got. Rutter, what was he? Twenty million euro out of Hoffenheim. Joel Pro, ten million quid from Swansea. I mean, you've paid huge fees for players that have had an impact in the championship this season. I mean, look. If, you say we've got just, an embarrassment of riches. Is that is that what well, that is? Well, <laughs> a little bit, Gilly. I mean, look, Ipswich's, Ipswich's record transfer fees four and a half mil. That's still 20, yeah. 20 years old. My yeah. mate, my mates, my mates, a uh, massive, massive Ipswich fan. He, he was actually due to come on tonight, but he's at a wedding, and he um, he's always like he's been giving me it all season how far we're behind we are, and then now we've overtaken him. It's like you've got a billion pound squad. How can't you be in front of us, sort of thing? So yeah, I, I sort of take that with a pinch of salt. R Rutter wasn't thirty five million, by the way. Those in the comments, that was the fee we would have paid had we stayed in the Premier League. I think it cost us about twenty. Five, if I remember rightly, I think I think there was a ten million add-on which we wasn't triggered because we got relegated. But um, right, I just want to move things on because I appreciate we've been on for over an hour. We've still got a couple of bits to do as well. I appreciate you all. Are you all good for time? Yeah, for another sort yeah. of 10, 15 minutes. Well, I'm still I'm I'm still reading from the fact that I've just found out I've come off the bench here, Luke. Yes, that's <laughs> <a little bit. laughs> I've got to go. You were third actually. We thought it was the real Matt Phillips. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sorry about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um. Tom, we'll come on to your running mate, if that's all right, uh, yep. really quickly. Um, where are we? Share screen. Um, there we go. Wicked. Give it to us. 
Go on then. You're not going to like it. You know that from the start. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Let's be honest. I wonder uh, who's going to be top. Oh, it, it was close. Uh, so I've got Southampton finishing fourth. Uh, I've got f- uh, five wins, four draws, and one loss, putting them on 92 points. I've got Ipswich third, uh, finish with four wins, three draws, and one loss, puts them on 96 points. 96 and not going up is crazy anyway it's a killer it's a killer, it's, it's a killer isn't it if, that, if that's how you finish it killer i've got leads uh next uh, win five drawn three and uh, one loss uh in that lot so no losses in that long uh and you finish on 100 points and leicester finish on 102 points and we lose in that running by the way i've got us losing southampton in that run uh I've also picked up on the next two games, like we said, over the Easter period. And out of all my fixtures, I've given us all four points. We all picked four points up from Friday and Monday's games for who we're playing. You know, if you look at Leeds, you've got Watford, but then you've got Hull away. Leicester have obviously got Bristol, and then they've got Norwich. Ipswich have obviously got Blackburn, where I've given you the three points. But then Southampton, I've got a draw for you guys. And then I've got Southampton beating Borough, but then drawing with Ipswich. I've given us all four points going over that Easter period. I think that said earlier. At all, does it? <laughs> I think that just tells you how tight it is with the four clubs. You know, there's only yeah. two points separating the top two, in my view, going into that final game. I think the game in hand against Southampton, it could be crucial. But for me, the next five Leicester games are the ones where we'll make or break our season. You know, if you take out, I think we'll get three points tomorrow. I'm confident we can go to Bristol City. Nothing to play for. Safe as houses now. Players are probably on a beach uh, down there, you know, Western Supermare, ready for their holidays. Uh, Norwich at home, tough, tricky tie. But then it's the next three for me. This could make our season. Birmingham home, Millwall away, Plymouth away. Three yeah. games where, for me, if we can go and get nine points, it really then turns up. Because after that, we obviously West Brom, Southampton. Before then, we play Preston and Blackburn. You know, the, the tricky tie is obviously going to be West Brom. I've already said they're having a great season. They should have probably got a point when we played them at their place and we nicked it at the end. Southampton's not going to be an easy game. I know we beat them 4-1 earlier in the season. Sorry to mention that, mine. Uh, and we battered you that day. But it's a different team now from then. And I think that's how I looked at going into this room. Our teams are all different from where they were 10 games ago. 10 games ago, Leicester was 17 points clear and we're all laughing. You know, it's a different time. It's different mentality from the boys now. So, for me, mm. we just nick it at the end. Just, I mean, just. It, it's going to be tight. Like, say, Leeds don't lose a game from now to the end of the season. Leicester only lose one game. That's how much I think Leicester and Leeds are going to push on. I've got Ipswich only losing one game. It, it's, it's so tight to call who's going to finish where. But I'm not going to turn around and say we're not going to finish first because I've dap been a Leicester fan not to try and back us. And I think, to be honest with you, I think the Football League and the Premier League have put the fire in the bellies of the players now what to need to prove a point to get back to the Premier League and say, you tried to put us off, didn't really work. You know what I mean? I think a lot of people will be anti-Leicester and I think that might just fire the uh, the players up even more to go and uh, get the job done now. We could, yeah. That's fair. I mean, uh, I would snap your hand off for a second. I'll be honest with you. I'd, blo- I'd love to win the league. Uh, but the, with the position that we were in, obviously when we were discussing sort of Christmas time, I think it was the turn of the year where we were all the million. I think it was a million and one points we were behind, weren't we? Um, and we still managed to, you know, get be in this position. I, I, I honestly couldn't see past the top two going up at that stage. I, I thought we'd had a really poor performance against um, Preston, and then was it West Brom as well, Gilly? That beat us. West Brom beat us. We got, no, beat by Preston and drew with West Brom, didn't we, I think, over Christmas. Drew with West Brom. Um, yeah. But really, really shite performance. No, I think West Brom beat us as well. Well, Preston did a number on us, didn't they? Because it, it, yeah. um, um, it was that cutting in from the Miller. left. And, Miller. Yeah. Um, and, and, you know, he did it three or four times against us. And do you know what? You can't take that away from him. Um, mm. it, it, it worked for him. It was just so frustrating that game that you could see it happening yeah. and we didn't do anything about it. Gilly, actually, while we've got you, I'll let you do our rundown here. How about that? While we're on the subject and while you're here, I will get yours out of the way. Um, so let me get that. Let me get that back up. Um, you're not going to like it. <laughs> I, 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 I better like I it. These lads I'm are going to prefer it. <laughs> uh, 
Do you know what? I change my mind every five minutes on this one. I think it's... It, it, uh, it, 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 until it you is. heard the squads, you probably had us finishing top, didn't you? Until you said <laughs> how, how many players they've all got available. It, it is tough. You know, uh, Bednarek coming back is, is is a massive deal. Um, you know, well, we, we've spoken through um, the players that, that the other sides have got coming back and we're just losing players, it seems. So um, I think it, 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 it is difficult. Um, and I've gone from... Yeah, there's no chance of automatics. There's no chance of automatics. Convincing myself, actually, do you know what? If some if something miraculous happens, great. But there's no chance. Let's let's not have any expectation. Uh, and then all of a sudden we're top of the league, and you're thinking, oh, shit, it's not. It's, it's ours to lose. And it's not really. You know, if Leicester go and win their game in hand, then they're still three points in front of us. Um, I I do wobble and waver. I actually have us <laughs> finishing third. Um, I think Leicester win it. Um, I don't think that Maresca is the man for the future for them, uh, but I think that the um, the the way that they're going to be able to corral around this, the world's against us. Leeds have done that really successfully over the years when it's happened to us, and we've been backs against the wall and we've been up against it. And I, I just feel like they've got something that's coming together that's, that is going to push them on, and they're going to get over the line. Um, and we've all been saying Ipswich are just going to drop away. And I don't think they are. Um, you know, they, they, they've, they've proven that the only reason that they're in third now is because they deserve to be. You don't be in third place one point off the lead uh, at this point in the season without deserving it. Um, and I, I, I worry that we go into the final game. I, Saints are the kingmakers. They have to play all three. Um, and you know, um, I thought that Saints might have been a little bit more skin in the game. But I'm going to listen to a bit to Martin, who, who's written. His own club off, so you know we'll take that. We'll take that on board. Um, uh, so, so, but they're the kingmakers. You know, if they get a, a, a great result against two of the sides above them, um, and one one of the sides gets three points against them, that's a massive swing in those points uh, available. I've got us finishing one point behind Ipswich, who finish four points behind Leicester. God. And how many points do Southampton finish behind us in fourth? Um, seven. Right, you got Leeds but that's because they're again. playing against the sides above. No, I, no, absolutely not. And you know what? I, 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 I cannot even start conceiving of discussing what happens uh, beyond the end of the regular season yeah. because well, that's let me, not let, a, let, hold that. It's not a great place for Leeds. <laughs> hold that thought. Well, we'll just have a bit of a discussion around 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 that. I mean, I'm I'm shocked that you haven't got Leeds finishing <laughs> top. I've got I've got Leeds finishing first and second. Then I've got I'm just kidding. Uh, I'm, I would snap your hand off for automatics based on where we were in the new year. As I keep keep drilling that into myself and look, we're, but we're there on merit and based on current current form. Current, there's no no team in the league can touch us. In fact, there's no team in Europe that is as good, in good a form as us. Um, so uh, I'm hoping that continues. Obviously, we're going to have a. Um, makeshift squad this weekend, shall we say, uh, based on probably um, what we have seen. And it almost feels like we might have to revert to a squad that we had towards the start of the season with Piro playing in the 10 where we weren't as sex sex successful, successful, successful. Um, We weren't as sexy (laughs) as well. We We definitely weren't as sexy then, but um, but it just didn't work. But that is the only option I can see happening right now uh, with Rutter recovering from, from an earlier operation. So um, yeah, quite shocked Gilly actually with that. Um, any of you lot shot puts us that, on ninety seven. It does I put us shocked. on ninety seven and not and not and not going up. You know, it's it's still a miraculous season, especially yeah, it's crazy. from from what what from the way that the transfer window ended in the summer. Because during that period, we had no idea what squad we were going to have. Can can I ask you, Luke and Gilly, a quick question? Because obviously you've got Watford tomorrow. Uh, it was one of the fixtures I looked at and couldn't really point where that game is going to go. One because of your injuries, but two because. Tom Clevery's obviously come in there. He's got a point to prove by giving him that manager's job for the remainder of the season. Do you really feel that is a tricky tie for you boys? Like, honestly, because I couldn't, I couldn't pick it out. Tom Clevery's done a great job. He went to Birmingham and got a win on his first game. I think it was. It, it's yeah, we, come we, up probably we, the we wrong point them. for you boys. I would argue. I would argue it was our most complete perform, or one of our most complete performances this season at home. This when we played when we played them. I think we beat them three nil. Uh, at our place, Gilly, if I remember rightly. I mean, I, you can fact check that. I'm pretty, pretty sure it was 3-0 or 3-1. But we played really, really well. 
um, in that game. And for me, it was one of the one of the one of the best performances we've had all season. But as you say, they've got a different manager in place now. Cleverly's from Bradford as well, who who, who hate Leeds. Uh, he played at Scum, so he's got an additional <laughs> bit of needle. Do you know what I mean? It's 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 got all the makings for a massive day for him and a, and a bit of an upset for us. Um, I'm hoping. I'm hoping. I mean. I would be happy with four points from the next two. I'd, I'd take the point at Watford and beat beat all at home on, on on what you said, Tom. I think I think I think we'd still be in good stead um, for the rest of the season if we can come out unscathed and unbeaten from these next two. What about you, Gilly? All are in some great form, you know, um, and I think they're really strong on the wings. Um, a lot of that is going to come down to the play, simply the plays that we've got available to us and, and the side that we can put out. I think if you look at so to answer the question. I do expect us to get something against Watford. Um, I, 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 I take the point. There's a lot around it and so on. But I, I, I do expect us um, to go and, and get points there. I, I do think it's only four because I think we'll draw at home, um, which, again, might be a surprise to some people. But Hull are really in form and, and they're one of the sides that people are going to be looking to avoid in, in the playoffs, I think, because they are in real form. Yeah, no, I completely agree. And just on playoffs, actually... Um... Got a question for everybody before we sort of tie, tie up now. Um, three questions in one, and I just want sort of a quick explanation as to why. First of all, I'll start with you, Martin, if you like, if that's all right. Um, who would you hate to meet if you are in the playoffs, firstly? West First point. question. Second question would be, who, which of the other managers would you prefer in charge, if not your own, for this running? And then the third question would be, if you could take any player from any of the other clubs for these last... 10 or 8 or whatever games you've got left, um, who would it be and why? So, first of all, your uh, your, your playoff question. West Brom. For me, who wouldn't want to play West Brom? I think they're already good. I think Corporan's the top manager. Uh, what was the next question? Um, the next question would be, which manager um, from anybody, anybody in the league, I suppose, but Daniel preferably from, from one of the others. It would be Daniel, Daniel Farker. Farker. All day, yeah. Yeah. And then last last but not least, if you could take or loan somebody for the last 10 games from another club, not to weaken them, but to strengthen you. Tough one. I'll tell you what, I like um, more at Ipswich. I think he's been a really, really good uh, loan signing. Um, mm. I'll probably take him just as a target man. We've got loads of wide men. But if we needed anything right now, we need a striker, someone like him that make an instant impact. I'd take um, I'd take more, which is a bit of a shock one, to be fair, but he's, he's good. Better play. Fair play. And the same question to you, Tom, please. I think if you're looking at the players, yeah, I think it's uh, West Brom would be the team you want to avoid. They're on a fine bit of run and I think they've had a few decent results the last couple of weeks. have really kick-started their run into the end of the season. Manager, I'd have McKenna. I really would. I like him. I think that uh, that uh, winning mentality from last season has really pushed it, switch on into this season. That's the thing. You would keep that winning feeling going. Uh, really makes a difference. And obviously, I'd nick Rutter from you guys because he's just it's aged in this division, and he really he's a, he's he's a class above everyone else. If I'm honest, here. I think if you look at player of the season, Rutter would be probably up there, hands down, the best player of the season in the championship for me. He uh, started off a bit slow, but just, well. After that 10 games, he's really got going. He's probably been your driving force for what, getting you up the league and up above us, really. I make you laugh, but Gilly, Gilly didn't rate Rutter. <laughs> in the Premier League. Yeah. Right. yeah. He didn't get much of a chance, in fairness, in the Premier League. He was, he, he, you know, he signed as this wonder kid that was going to save our season when real, in realism he was just a kid like and it, it, the unfair amount of pressure and he was getting 10 minute cameos from Sam Allardyce let's be honest he's not going to be uh, it's not, he's not <laughs> going to turn into he's not going to turn into prime prime messy is it um, Matt you, those three questions to yourself mate please if you will yeah I wouldn't want to be meeting West Brom in, uh, in the playoffs my friend Chris Hall does Albion Analysis podcast thinks if they play us they'll beat us they, they schooled us at the Hawthorns. We had a very entertaining 2-2 draw with them at Pullman Road. We were 2-1 down. We had to, again, we had to wait until 94th, 95th minute for Murray Hutchison to get us back on level terms. Um, so I wouldn't want to be facing them across two legs. If I was to choose a manager, I'd go back to someone who's, who's been in the Ipswich setup already and at Bristol City, Liam Manning. I'm pretty certain if McKenna was to leave, Manning would be on our radar. Uh, you know, it's, 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 it's ready-made, that role, for someone who, who plays good football and knows what the culture of Ipswich Town is like and I think Liam Manning would be that. If I was to choose players, uh, I like Mavadidi at um, Leicester. I like 
uh, Juice Behold at Leicester. Um, Joel Perot, we really liked it when, when he, I think he scored on his debut down at Pullman Road. But there's, there's lots of decent players out there. But um, yeah, Mavid, Mavid, he's got a really, really good goal at Pullman Road on Boxing Day. Uh, left side of the box, didn't need much back lift, curled around Haladke. It was, a, it was a quality finish and, you know, goals outside the box are goals, you know. Wicked. Gilly, I'll, uh, we'll finish up with, with, with your three, mate. Um, yeah, so I think, um, I, I can't remember what order the questions were in, but it, um, Gaffer first. Uh, yeah, Gaffer first. Um, I think I, I, yeah, I think I think it's probably McKenna. Um, I think if you look at the way that he's instilled what is needed and the way that he's laid out exactly what he needs from his players at any given time, I, 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 you know, it's diffi- He's got a big future in the game, and I think it's testament to his mentality that he can have a setback in football early on in his career and then translate that. You know, not not think you know, woe is me, and just jack it in and go. Do you know what? I had a bright future and it's been taken away from me through through no fault of my own. He's then worked on that, pivoted to something else, and he's he's making a success of him. And I think that that's that 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 tells that he's got a big future in management for me. Um so I, yeah, I think I'd, I'd go McKenna. Um I think in terms of teams to avoid, um I, I do you know what? I'd quite fancy West Brom. Uh, and I know, given that I've said that we're going to finish third and we're going to be in the playoffs, I recognise that that can really come back and bite me in the ass. Uh, we've, I think, we've gone. We, we we lost at Christmas against them, um, but uh, you know, in the last six or seven, we've really had one over on them. Um, so I, you know, I, I think the Corbran link, um, it, it, it's always added a little bit for us anyway while he's been there. So I I, I don't know. I, I think I think for me it'd be Hull. I think Philogene has, has something about him. I think they've got some real um, real capability on the wings. Um, I think offensively, you know, we've had a conversation about Firpo a lot. Uh, offensively, Firpo uh, has added a lot. You know, he's getting assists and he's, he's getting in the right positions in attack. Um, uh, <laughs> defensively, uh, maybe there's still some question marks there. So, I don't know. I, I think it'd be Hull that I'd be looking to avoid. And they're on a, un, uh, an unbeaten run themselves. Um, so them and West Brom are probably the form size. And Norwich, uh, again, they, they are form size going into it. But I think it'd be Hull for the reasons of the way that they're set up against against yeah, teams. I, th- I actually thought Matt was going to say Norwich just because of the you know the history and and not beating them in twenty six thousand years. We'll beat them easy. We'll beat them easy. Bring it on the shellacking. <laughs> Gilly and, and one um, player, mate. If you could nick one. In terms of players, um, I, I really, really have an intense dislike for him. But just because of what he's done against us, I, I really struggle to look against uh, beyond Vardy. Um, he's ripped as a new one so many times. Um, and at this level... He's a dick, you know, he? He's a dick. He's a shit shithouse. Yeah, he's the type of player he's you want to play against. Right with, sorry. He's, a he's, he's one of those... You love him. Is oh, I think you're doing him a disservice, calling <laughs> Robbie Savage. <laughs> no, it's one of he's them. Hate though, isn't he? Yeah, you love him if he's in your team. You hate him if he's against you. You date playing. I I were a centre back. I didn't want somebody little and quick running at me, and he's got pace to burn. Still now, you know, it looks even more like Steptoe than he did when he first came into Premier League. <laughs> uh, but he's still doing it, and so I think if he's fit and firing, I struggle to look beyond him. Yeah. Yeah, fair. Mine, my mine, mine really quickly would be would be McKenna. It'd be uh, in the playoffs. It would be Coventry. I think Coventry uh, look and Andy side uh, that O'Hare's going to get some contracts probably in the Premier League. He's 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 probably what most of our clubs probably is missing. Uh, and if I was, he, he would be my other player. He would be the player I would take from any Championship club. But from any of our clubs, um, it would either be uh, Walker Peters or Pereira. Uh, I think, um, and Walker Peters, I just think he's, he's, he's class, and we, we that would give us freedom to put Archie into his preferred position in midfield, but also Pereira, like as you say, he's been the been the the cog for you, and and you've fallen to pieces without him. So yeah, really, really quickly put, but I think that's about it for the running lads. Um, I think has anybody would would you like to add anything before we close? I'll come round you all, Martin. Is there anything you want to want to throw out there before we uh, before we finish up? Thanks for spending an hour and a half with me on your Thursday night, by the way. <laughs> no, I've really enjoy, I've really enjoyed it. I've enjoyed your company. Looking forward to the running. I think it's going to be really intriguing. I think there'll be loads of twists and turns, and there'll probably be some permutations that we that we haven't pulled out. But you just never know in football, dear. Strange things happen in football, and there's never been a harder season to be in the you know in the championship fighting for promotion. 
I, I think it's going to it's going to be better viewing than the Premier League will be to finish off. I really do. I prefer it anyway. I'll be honest with you, the, the, for many reasons. Yeah, no, but we won't go. Problem. Yeah, we won't. Yeah, we won't yeah. go into that too much. But detail. but uh, where can people find you, Martin? If people want to hear you or talk to you a little bit more. Yeah, no, I, I'm a I'm a TikToker really, so I do a lot of TikTok content, a lot of daily TikTok content around Southampton. So give me a follow at Football Martin underscore there. I've got a YouTube channel. If you're watching on YouTube, please do subscribe to me uh, at Football Martin underscore. I create match day vlogs, and if you're an away fan and you're visiting St Mary's in the next couple of weeks, I'd love to talk to you and get you on my channel. And I'll be travelling to a few away games as well. Unfortunately, can't get to Portman Road on Monday because I would have loved to have met Matt. Um, you might get to meet Tom when I go up to the KP in a couple of weeks and then Luke and Gilly you never know if uh, I can get a ticket for Ellen Road I'll definitely come and find you too I'll promise you you do not want to meet me on the last day of the season <laughs> <laughs> the state well, I'm going to be in mate far, but, yeah, I'm I've never been to Ellen Road so it's somewhere I, I really want to go but um, yeah thank you very much pleasure cheers Martin thanks for coming on uh, Tom Anything you'd like to add, mate? Uh, well, first, thanks for having on, Guy. And it's been a, a great chat. I think we're all quite excited and nervous as well going into the, the final nine, ten, eight games because considering we've all got different amounts to play. Uh, but it's not going to be easy. I think we all know that. I think we all sit here now thinking no one is going to walk away with it. We thought we were at one point. We did. Let's not, I'm not going to deny that. But, you know, no one is now. And everyone's got a chance of going up. You know, I think... Southampton probably just a bit too far for me to get that automatic spot but the other three anyone can take it and it's who's got the bottle to finish the job now so mm. look exciting times ahead I'm looking forward to it and I prefer the championship to the Premier League most of the time anyway I don't, you know it's been great to have no VAR this season I think we all sit here and agree on that one thing for sure no VAR celebrating the goal when it hits the back of the net and there's no looking around to wait for a sign to be made that it's going to the TV screen there's a lot more football than wait, looking at the monitors every single time so no long long and nine games for us all but no nah, looking forward to it and uh, cheers for having on guys it's been a uh, great pleasure cheers Tom where can people find you you're on Leicester, Leicester, TV, Leicester fan TV is it yeah, Leicester Fan TV, or if you want to follow me on Twitter, it's Tom at LFTV, and uh, I do quite a bit on there myself anyway. But yeah, otherwise, drop us all at Leicester Fan TV. There's five, six, seven of us who all do bits and pieces throughout the week, and uh, you know, all massive Leicester diehard Leicester fans, including Jamie, who's in Alcudia, who, uh, well, what can I say? He comes back when he can. <laughs> <laughs> Can't be bad. Thanks ever so much for that, Tom. Cheers, Matt, guys. any last words? Not last ever. I mean, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that it? Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, thanks for bringing me. Thanks for bringing me off the substance, Luke. I appreciate that. Um, look, well done to all of you. I mean, look, we've we've gone through our predictions. We're all, we're all on ninety points plus. As we said earlier that would generally get you second, probably winning the title. So it's been phenomenal. Ipswich fans will tell you under the Marcus Sevens era for twenty years after we got relegated out of the Premier League, we were just treading water. I mean, uh, McCarthy come in. Bored us to tears. Paul Lambert got us relegated, albeit he, he tried to keep us up. Um, and now we're kind of living the high life a little bit. Do you know what I mean? We're, we didn't expect to be here. We're enjoying the ride. We're the underdogs in this. Um, you know, you've got your parachute payments completely. To, even though we've, we're, we're pretty well off financially now with our ownership, it still gets dwarfed by the, the parachute payments that you get. But there's no pressure on us. We're going to enjoy the ride. I still think we'll probably finish third. Let's see what the playoffs brings. But um, it's been a very entertaining season. Like I say, a lot of Ipswich fans' are, are, are season was over by January, February. So to be even knocking on the door of the Premier League, um, you know, with this new investment that's coming for town, it's, it's great. And to see kids walking around Ipswich now with players' names on backs of shirts and they're invested in McKenna and the, and the lads that have come in, like Connor Chaplin and Kiefer Moore. And, you know, we weren't, we weren't getting this even like four or five years ago. So it, it's brilliant to see. And we'll see where the journey takes us. Brilliant, yeah. It's, it, so many similarities to, to to our start, like when we were promoted to the Premier League under Marcelo. It just brought, it just brought that feeling, that good fe yeah. good feeling around the city yeah, back, and it was just, it, yeah. Um, when wake up, where can people find you, Matt? If they want a bit more ITFC content, yeah. Talk, so yeah, talking town. We do shows on um, Sun, well after every game, but also we have our flagship show on Sunday. We have our preview show, which Martin's been on, on, on a Wednesday. Just hit into YouTube, Talking Town ITFC, and put it the same into anywhere where you'd get your audio podcast, Talking Town ITFC. Spot on. 
Perfect. Thank you ever so much, all of you, for giving your time up tonight. It's Thank been a, it's been a fantastic show. Really appreciate it. Um, maybe we'll get together a little bit closer to the end of the season if it's still a four us race or whatever, and maybe have a bit more of a chat. More than happy for us guys to. Uh, yeah, there's five of us that, that do this podcast as well, so there's always somebody available if you ever if you ever need anybody. Um, that in mind, um, do smash a like and subscribe, please, if you are here. Pay your rent. Um, we'll be back after. After, in fact, we might be back Friday morning to do a, a preview for 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 Watford. I think some of the lads because we didn't have a main pod this week. If not, we'll be back for a Brady and Coke after the game uh, at Watford, and then after after the whole game as well. Um, anything else, anything else to add? Oh, one other thing I do need to add. Do follow us up me on Twitter specifically, but all know better as well. Uh, I'm I'm currently well. I'm about to start a uh, three thousand push ups in press ups, sorry, we're English, not American, in three hundred press ups in April, uh, for cancer research, which I'm starting. So if you can share yeah. it, that's great. Yeah. If you can afford to donate a quid, yeah. that'd be even better. Yeah. But yeah, thank you so much for that. Gilly, anything to add? Yeah, just a couple of real quick things. So um regular watchers will know that we're advocates for Andy's Man Club. Um and uh, at the weekend, I'm still struggling from it now. At the weekend, we did a, a long walk across Leeds. So for you guys that don't know, there's there's murals that popped up all over all over Leeds that um, artwork that have been done by Leeds fans and and celebrating ex players, ex managers, current players, and what have you. Um, and we did, um, in in memory of Gary Speed, we did a, a walk all across the town. Um, I think we were 28 kilometres, I think it was in the end, and we raised over. Over three thousand pounds now it is, um, including the gift aid. So thank you to everybody that's donated and shared and that supported us. Um, and then last night, friend to the pod, uh, stats, LUFC stats, um, ran a, a, a quiz at Ellen Road, and that was uh, in aid of the Leeds United Foundation, uh, which helps communities um, a, a, and, and so on um, through the power of football, but um, also for. Uh, Andy's Man Club as well, so that was split donations there across there, and that raised over two thousand pounds as well. So in terms of the charity stuff, we've had a we've had a pretty good week. But congratulations to Stats that ran a, a successful quiz and and uh, and they made some good money on the night as well. It was a really good event. It was nice. Brilliant. brilliant. Sounds Thanks, brilliant. Gilly. Well done. Brilliant. Thanks for that. Um, look, massive respect to you all. Good luck with uh, with the rest of your seasons and what's been the running. But at the end of the day, all leads, aren't we? <laughs>